you are watching Notable Talks and today we have on Notable Talks Mr. Anshul Rastogi. He is a founder at Totality Corp. He's a passionate gaming enthusiast. He also dived into blockchain in 2011, very early for in comparison with the people we have in the pool right now. And now he is developing Xeonverse, a truly decentralized, full-blown metaverse gaming system. And uh, we would love to have a chat with him and we will slowly progress to do that also. So hello, Mr. Anshul Rastagi. Um, how are you Hi, feeling man. today? Yeah, feeling great. Thanks. Looking forward to this conversation. Aha. Before we go on to the tech questions, which we are going to go forward eventually, I have to ask some non-tech questions to you. You are sure. a brilliant mind, sir. You have the A-class education in India. You have been into IIT, IIT Delhi and then you eventually progressed into IIM Bangalore. And I also made a point that you studied chemical engineering uh, in your that's BTEC correct. years. So yes, what shifted you from chemistry to technology and coding and metaverse and uh, a complete shift in the field, I would say. Uh, we really want to know what is the story behind this? Sure. Um, you know, thank you so much for the kind words. Um, I think I've been fortunate to from as a kid that I got really good, um, you know, opportunities to actually educate myself and really good exposure that I knew that there are, uh, you know, aisles of excellence like IIT and IIM. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was very inspired from my father, who is also from IIT Delhi, also oh. my cousin, who is also from IIT Kanpur, to really pursue um, sort of IIT uh, because those were the places where, uh, you know, it was always deemed that people who are intelligent, who are competitive, want to go. And I was a very competitive uh, even as a child. And I, once I knew that, you know, my my father is from there, my cousin is from there, I just wanted to enter the same places because I was competitive. And that's really the, the honest answer. Uh, it wasn't really chasing any love for engineering that I actually went there. Uh, the reason I chose chemical engineering is um, my father actually has a, a synthetic fiber uh, factory. That is the business he has always been in. And I really felt that doing chemical engineering I'll be able to actually uh, help him out in that business, which was, you know, like if you grow from a business family, that's always the plan that you will eventually take over your parents' uh, business and, and actually grow their legacy as well. Hmm. Uh, unfortunately, I will say that once I got into, um, you know, uh, IIT, I think I was a little bit jaded from what I thought the system would be versus what it actually was. Um, if anything, um, you know, whatever love I could have had of uh, chemical engineering was definitely lost. I actually came out of my four years thinking that I will do anything but chemical engineering, oh. uh, etc. So I started exploring what are the things that actually excited me. Um, you know, coding was something that was really gaining uh, a lot during that time. So I obviously started, you know, playing uh, with different programming languages. MATLAB was one that really excited me even when I was in school. I've actually written and created games uh, because oh. gaming was something that was always very, very interesting to me, right? Like just sitting and playing um, with any sort of game was not only entertaining, it was very competitive. And I always used to love the fact that when you are in a game, there is a particular design, right? And what you are trying to figure out is what is that design and how do I overcome that and beat the, the enemies in the game itself? So that spirit of competition, that spirit of challenge is always what excited me towards gaming and moved me towards technology first and then um, in finance. In finance also, it was the same factor when you are trading, um, you know, it's you versus the market. There is a challenge of being a little bit smarter. So I think the the one line of uh, thought that, that always uh, was with me in everything that I've done is that it should be challenging, it should be dynamic, it should be interesting always until it gave me that that feeling of these three factors, I kept doing uh, the same things. There's a lot of buzz around that NFT will drive the digital economy and Web3 is the future of the internet. 
we would appreciate if you can explain to our audience about what exactly is web3 and nft and how is it going to impact a normal internet users day to day engagement with technology sure um so i think like i'll first go through the definition that most people um will will quote and if people have read about web3 this is what they hopefully have come across hmm. so um the the beginning of the internet in the 90s to almost you know 2004 was the era of web1 web1 was a peer to peer internet where people were writing information and by and large everyone else was just reading that particular information right so it's it's the era of your yahoo the era of your aol where you were really reading information um from one source or a couple of sources which were only writing it from 2004 onwards approximately we started getting the likes of google facebook uh coming in and actually uh building in web2 and the change in web2 was that you could now interact and create that information uh dynamically right so whether that was your facebook posts whether that was information that you wrote on wikipedia which uh, which the community approved and it could actually start changing dynamically the content started becoming dynamic and started becoming creator owned right so there was a democratization of uh, content creation and there was a dynamic element that once i created the content the time it took for it to upload and for other people to see it and react to it in terms of likes and comments etc would be very very quick so predominantly the era of mobile apps um of social media is dominated by this era of dynamic content creation and creator economy what web3 is doing is actually keeping uh, the dynamic part of the content which is very very important because a lot of these ecosystems have added a lot of value to us and it's actually giving the ownership back to the users and people so what web3 does with ownership are two important aspects one as an owner you now have the autonomy to decide how to interact with the ecosystems right today when i use whatsapp uh, i only have two choices i either agree to what whatsapp is telling me to do or i, I, I or i am not on whatsapp right but as you come towards uh, more web3 applications like brave browser they will give me a plethora of choices i can keep using brave browser i can uh, you know give them my data if i give them my data i earn certain tokens for providing my data for seeing the ads etc if i do certain other labor in any other ecosystem i actually get value out of it so i get the autonomy i get to decide how i want to interact with the system the second part is ownership also brings uh, you know good behavior right because now i am an owner i am a long term player uh, of that ecosystem i will care about that ecosystem and i will become a good actor in that ecosystem so today obviously you cared about your instagram profile but to care about instagram as a community and a company was very limited now that you have actually made me part owner of that and i will benefit from the community growing benefit from that ecosystem growing i will actually also do good functions and good behavior to promote that which means that the acceleration of good ecosystems in web3 will be a lot faster than it was in web2 because now the entire community is incentivized to actually make that ecosystem much larger and actually provide value to all of us together so i think that's the really big difference of web3 is that now we have gone from read in web1 to read write in web2 to read write and own in web3 and ownership gives us autonomy and incentivizes us for good behavior so that's the aspect of uh, web3 itself um nfts to me are a gateway to actually get in and out of uh, web3 they are a technology layer um today a lot of nfts are deemed to be digital art and collectibles but what nfts are basically providing you you can think of it as your identity as your information uh, stored uh, for the digital ecosystems right so what i believe will eventually happen and why nfts are very powerful is that the digital anshul will actually be a master nft contract every digital good that i own whether that's a car a costume my digital specs a hairstyle that i have digitally 
uh, digital currencies in terms of bitcoin ethereum or uh, you know or other digital currencies that i own will all be part of my master nft contract right like in real life uh, the land itself is owned by anshul it isn't the other way around similarly in the web3 world and in the metaverse all these digital goods will be owned by the digital identity of anshul which will actually be my identity in the web3 and the metaverse which is why nfts are very powerful so meta facebook being so aggressive about pushing ai and ml across all collaboration and marketing channels how can a marketer leverage metaverse to engage better with its customers at both b2 uh, b2c and b2b friend what are your views yeah i think that's a very interesting uh, point see i think um with the advent of web2 applications like you rightly said about facebook and google mm-hmm. digital marketing and the rules of what marketing became uh, have completely changed and now with web3 they are going to change again mm-hmm. uh why because uh, you know this this whole idea that you know data is more powerful than oil which it did become because every little movement that i did in the web2 world is now recorded and stored uh by one of these behemoths right so yes. between google and facebook they probably know 90% of what anshul or most of us do uh in the digital worlds uh because we are in so many of their ecosystems right uh what will happen in the web3 world is because that power comes back to me i will decide whether what amount of data to give and who to give what set of data right so for example imagine that i have my food preferences over time i have ordered from different places and there will be an equivalent of zomato and an equivalent of swiggy i might decide that to swiggy i will give them uh, my preferences for indian food to zomato i will decide to give them my preferences for pizzas right and to maybe a third one i decide to give everything given uh, whatever benefits they they provide to me so you will not be able to assume that all the data of the all the community members you will have by default right it presents a very interesting challenge because now to build the community do you only build if you are a digital marketer in web2 world today and you only use data you will only be able to build for people who are agreeing to share the data right that may not be a very big percentage of people and even the percentage who share the data they may not be sharing their entire data with you so what will happen is some part of the traditional marketing mindset which went away in digital marketing which is assuming that what is it that people like right like people who used to create billboards and tv ads needed to really understand human psychology and needed to really figure out what is it that people will like and and hence create ads and billboards and uh, and newspaper advertisements that way that field will again come back because a lot of marketing will now happen with broad assumptions right mm. so if you do a pretty large marketing campaign you will only know the result of the marketing campaign you cannot pinpoint that oh this person came because he saw x word and now i should only use this word in my seo etc uh, uh, so on so the granularity of data will because of our privacy concerns go away and some part of human psychology uh, really betting on what people will like will keep coming back to marketing again which which is neither a good or bad change is just a change that is bound to happen and so so people who were missing that aspect of marketing will uh, hopefully again be happy what does being a nft investor mean how can one uh, start his or her journey in this domain and what are the primary checkpoints one should be aware of before investing in nfts um so see um buying an nft is actually not that different than thinking about buying shares in any company right in both cases what you are really betting on is is there a good ecosystem that actually gets created like is there is a good company and a good business that actually gets created and will that value actually flow through me uh, as an investor whether that's in an nft or as an equity holder the value is very different right so as an nft holder um your nft which is part of a ecosystem you have to really decide why will this ecosystem grow right so if you are a crypto punk holder or you are a board ape uh, yacht club uh, you know holder today they, these are worth millions of dollars right now uh, from a million dollar can they still become 10 million 
obviously they can because the status they have attained is that of a social status in web3 as web3 adoption increases people are really betting that something like a crypto punk will still remain very valuable in people's view that anyone owning a crypto punk has a lot of social status in the web3 world because today putting a profile picture of a crypto punk or a bayc that i own is symbolizing to people that i am very intelligent i was who came in early recognized the trend and buying social status with money is actually extremely valuable because social status itself is very valuable so you have to be very clear that what you are buying and what is the purpose of it right similarly for example buying an nft in let's say a, a sandbox whether you buy a land or whether you buy a different sort of avatars uh, you know what is the purpose that those nfts are actually solving in that ecosystem so if that ecosystem grows the purpose in that ecosystem grows you will actually end up making money right what's ending up happening today is obviously some nft projects make a lot of money so i myself invested in 25 nft projects personally uh, in 21 of them i've actually made very big losses like in some of them i've lost the entire money that i invested but four of them have given me um, a return of more than 10 times right so overall this has been profitable for me but if i look back obviously when i invested in them i felt like all 25 would work which is why i was investing in them right but really the key was to understand that how much of the other community members believe in this project and how much are they willing to give a leeway for this community and project to build right so so in terms of doing your due diligence uh, go to the discord channels see what other people are saying on twitter see what is the capability of this team have they actually done other projects uh, etc the amount of money they are raising with the nft is that enough to take them to the next milestone uh, uh, so that the community can see that the next part is being built and they can really keep believing in that project more and more so i think it's like i said it's pretty similar to how you will analyze companies see the product see uh, how other people and community is reacting and only then take your bet on it how do you see india's growth till date in blockchain and nft domain and how does the future look like to you yeah with india i'm i'm extremely excited um, see um, india has all the tech talent india has a lot of large user base india has a very educated uh, market which is very hungry for sort of new technological products uh, if we see you know social media products or gaming products india has one of the largest user base in the world right in terms of gaming we are the second largest number of gamers in the world in terms of most of the social network products we are either number 1 or number 2 so we adapt to technology very quickly we know how to create technology we now have uh, money to spend on technological services india definitely has all the raw materials for it to become the number one uh, web3 not only consumer but also the number one web3 developer for the rest of the world right which is very exciting uh, aspect for india because we definitely were the leaders in terms of creating internet and digital economy it grew from silicon valley even though now most of the ceos and the leadership of of these silicon valley companies come from india for web3 we can actually create a you know ground level uh, revolution from india itself so what we really need to happen is hope I'm, and which is what i'm really hopeful about is that the government is also very supportive right so if the government is as supportive about web3 like they were for fintech then there is nothing that can actually stop us what do i mean by that so uh, the government rightly has concerns about privacy security you know can people be using cryptocurrency transactions to actually you know fuel or finance illegal activities and i think if the government comes out with a equivalent of a crypto india stack where they say here is a crypto wallet that you know we are giving as a standard for people to use here are certain blockchain standards that you can use and that allays their concerns but also gives a massive boost to the entire web3 tech industry in india there will definitely be no stopping us uh, to be the leaders in this area because like i said we have the developers we have the consumer people willing to spend 
on such technological services what is totality corps mission and vision for 2022 also we would like to know more about lakshmi nft sure um so what we are creating is zionverse um zionverse is a is a metaverse play uh what is essentially a metaverse like i said it's a place where we live digitally i see zionverse being developed in three phases phase 1 is that we actually create um you know intense social connections which will actually happen through gaming if you think about what happened in web 2 with the likes of facebook and instagram they first needed to create the social connections with each other by sharing either what we like as friends uh, or we like as interest like it happened with instagram similarly for web 3 for zionverse we are creating those intense social connections by using gaming right because when you game together when you game against each other or with each other or when you create um, you know gaming content it's very interactive it actually forms great social connections like is already happening with the roblox and minecraft of the world the second phase for zionverse is actually to build a financial layer on top of the gaming so you will be able to do all your nft purchase all your cryptocurrency uh, trading all your cryptocurrency uh, wealth management actually through the zionverse platform we will definitely have partners um, who will be helping us you know build that financial layer itself and phase 3 is actually to make it a place of commerce and when i say a place of commerce i mean all your uh, e-commerce purchases that you do on the likes of amazon uh, everything that you do with banking transactions with icici with hsbc uh you know what you do with ott platforms today uh what you do with what we are doing on zoom all of those interactions of commerce will also take place through a metaverse like zionverse itself and we would invite businesses like the uh, likes of zoom or amazon to come and engage with their community on zionverse itself so that's what the vision is of zionverse uh today we are building phase 1 which is of gaming our first game will launch in march so in another two months time it will be a death match game uh you know uh which will be on android app and we will also do a set of nft sales for people to access the death match game itself by september of this year we will launch a user generated platform where all of us can come in create our own games create our own content and publish it to the community and next year we will start focusing on integrating phase 2 which is the financial layer and the year after that in 2024 we would start uh, integrating the layer of commerce uh, which is phase 3 for zionverse um so that's the that's the vision for zionverse um, it's very expansive but we are very excited about it Uh, what lakshmi nft is it was our first set of nft sales so um so like i said a lot of nft today is considered to be just digital art and collectibles mm-hmm. and we really wanted to set apart um to the community that nfts are actually a gateway right they are more than digital art they are gaming they are your utility tokens they are your social status they are your 3d avatar inside uh, for the metaverse itself so with the lakshmi nft what you got was obviously great 3d models of eight avatars of goddess lakshmi and lord ganesha but also you get monthly rewards for owning the lakshmi nft and at the end of 12 months you use your lakshmi nft to take part in a obstacle course game which is called vijay dash and you will earn further 50 usdc to all the way to a 1000 usdc as additional rewards after this 12 month period you can convert your lakshmi nft to a unique 3d avatar and you can use that avatar to access all other content and games inside the zionverse metaverse itself so we really wanted to tell the community that nfts are a gateway to the metaverse which is what we did with the lakshmi nft had to launch it in december and sell out of the lakshmi nft in december itself really quickly and we got a lot of love and support from the community on lakshmi nft itself so that was great we would love to hear your thoughts about anytechtrial.com so anytechtrial.com i think what i really liked about it is it's actually giving a great place for discovery as well as knowledge about these different products 
I think as a business and even as an individual, there are tons of products that I use for my own productivity, not only as at a personal level but also professional level. And then as a company at totality, there are obviously tons of technological products that we are using. One of the issues that anyone has as an individual or as a company is how do you actually get intelligence around these products and how do you discover what other people are saying about these products? I think AnyTechTrial.com actually helps us on both aspects to have a more intelligent discovery of products and to be able to then take a more educated decision about buying such products and actually affecting our daily lives both personally as well as professionally. So I think that's that's great and it has really helped us that way. Now we are going to play a short game with you. It's called a rapid fire round and I will ask you questions, one word questions and you will have to come up with answers which whatever word which comes in your mind when you hear the following. It has to be rapid since it is the rapid fire round. Okay, so no no breaks here or no pauses here to think. Okay. All right. Okay, one word that comes to your mind about automation. Technology. People. Love. Holidays. Family. Favorite book. Um, Iron Rand, uh, Atlas Shrug. Favorite OTT platform. Uh, definitely Netflix. One thing you wish you knew earlier in life. Um, that there are like you know success is um, multifaceted there is no one definition of it it actually is more internal than it is external I really wish wow. I knew that from the beginning wow your favorite collaboration application uh, zoom one social cause you would like to work for more in, in the future um, definitely educating as many people as I can so that everyone has an equal opportunity to become as successful as they want to be. Thank you so much. It was really, really insightful session with you, sir.